Hi, and thanks for watching the video. I'm Todd Beginski. I'm a Microsoft MVP and the partner and CTO at Canvas. In this video, I'm going to show you how to implement a very common ask in a Power App, and that's the ability to like something, just like in Facebook. I'm going to take the out-of-the-box Shoutouts Power App sample template from web.powerapps.com, and I'm going to extend it so that you're able to like the individual shoutouts that are sent from one person to another within the app. Let's get started. As I mentioned, I'm using the Shoutouts Power App from web.powerapps.com for my example. You can get the same Power App by going to web.powerapps.com, going to the home page here, and scrolling down until you find the Shoutouts Power App. Here it is in the list. You can either make the mobile or the tablet version of this Power App just by clicking Make This App. After you've clicked Make This App, it will open in the Power Apps Editor and then it will allow you to save it to your Power Apps environment. I've already done that with this copy of the Power App I have running right here. And if you've used this Power App before, you'll notice something is different on this page. If you haven't seen the Power App before, let me point out what's different, and that's the smiley face I have right here. When you click it, it allows you to like this particular shoutout. I'm also displaying how many people like this shoutout, and if I click on the link right there, it pops up a gallery and shows me the pictures of the people who like this shoutout. By clicking this X button here, I'm able to close the gallery. Now, I haven't liked this one, as we saw when we opened up the gallery here, because my picture is not here, so I can just merely click this smiley face, and you'll see the dancing dots at the top of the page here moving, as that entry is made into the Excel document that indicates I like it. Now you can see the number has increased to three, and the smiley face has been disabled. I did this so someone cannot like the shout out more than once. Again, I will click on how many people like the shout out, and here I can see now my picture is in the list, and I'm one of the people who's liked the shout out. So let's see how you can implement this type of like functionality into your own Power App or this Power App right now. As I mentioned in many of the other videos I've made about Power Apps, the easiest way to see how a Power App is built is to put it inside of edit mode, get to the page you're looking for, and then take the editor back out of preview mode into the editing mode where you can click on the controls and learn more about them. The place I'd like to start to show you how I extended this app to support likes, or how you could add likes to any Power App for that matter, is the data source. If I go up to view and select data sources here, you can see I have the shout out data source, but I also have one called likes. You will not get the likes data source when you download the shout outs Power App. I added it. This keeps track of who's liked each shout out. So what is the likes data source? Well, let me show you where that came from and how I added it to the Excel sheet. Now my shout outs application stores its data in this file called data.xlsx here on my OneDrive. I'm going to open this up now inside of Excel and show you the changes I made to it. Inside the Excel sheet, Sheet 1 tracks the different shoutouts in the application. The primary ID column is the basically the primary key. It's unique for each shoutout created in the applications. So what I did was I created another sheet. And then I made a table in here that includes the primary ID as well as the person's email who created the like. This allows me to keep track if someone has liked a given shoutout or not. The Power Apps ID that you see right here in this column is created by a Power App when the Power App writes data to the Excel sheet. After I created this table structure, I then turned this into a data table. And I gave it the name Likes, like you can see right here. That's how this Power App has the data source name Likes in it, because it keys off the name of the table that I created in Excel. So, in summary, I'm going to use this table each time somebody likes a shout-out. I'm going to put in the ID of the shout-out they like and the email address associated with the user who liked it. 
After I created the new data table in Excel, to add it to the data sources here in Power Apps, I clicked Add Data Source. Then I picked my OneDrive for Business, and I dig down into the particular sheet that stores the data for this particular Power App. And that's this one right here. After I select that particular folder and I open that Excel file, here you can see the two different tables inside of it. So to add likes, I just selected it and pick connect. That added it to my list of data sources in the app. Now that the data source was in place, I needed a button that would allow me to like a given shout out in the app. Here you can see the button that I created. I used an out of the box icon for Power Apps and I named it like and placed it here. Then inside of the on select, I wrote this patch statement that will update the data table named likes inside of the Excel sheet. So I call patch against that data source and I pass in the default record to work with because I'm making a new record. And inside of that, I pass in the two parameters that represent the primary ID and the creator email. Remember, those are the same two columns we saw in the Excel sheet. In this case, I set the primary ID to this ID. This means that whichever shout out is selected in this gallery correlates to this item. And here's its primary ID. The user dot email returns me the email for the currently logged in user. So that's how I tracked who created the like for a shout out. After I did that, remember, I wanted to make a way to disable the smiley face shout out liking button right here and you can see it is disabled now because it's not blue when it's enabled it turns blue to control the behavior to ensure someone could only like a shout out one time i edit the display mode property here and here i filter the likes data source where the creator email is equal to the current user's email and the primary id again is equal to the particular item in the list gallery's uh, primary ID. So I filter down my likes collection and then I count the rows in there. And if it's greater than zero, I know that this user has liked this shout out before. So I will disable the control. If not, I'll enable it with the edit property right there. Okay, so moving on. Next thing we have is the label that describes how many people like the shout out and also opens up the gallery display below to show who liked it. So if I take a look at this particular control and we look at the text property for it, we can see in here the logic that we're using to make this grammatically correct and indicate how many people like the shout out. So the way that this one works is I run an if statement and I count up the different rows that are the filtered result set from my likes data source where the primary ID is equal to the primary ID of the item currently selected in the gallery. If that's greater than one, then what I'm going to display is the count of them and then people like this. If that same exact condition evaluates to one, then I'm gonna say, here's the count again, which will always evaluate to one person likes this. I could also put the number one in there just like that and eliminate this code too. Finally, if the value is not greater than one or equal to one, then I'm going to emit the text, be the first to like this. The next piece of the puzzle is how do we show the gallery down here and populate it with data when someone clicks on how many people like it? To do that, the onSelect property right here for that text control looks like this. Again, I'm doing the filter of the likes where the primary ID is equal to the currently selected shoutouts primary ID. And if the count of that filtered row set is greater than zero, I'm going to set a variable called show who liked equal to true. 
show who liked equal to true is actually triggering the visibility of my gallery control, the background, as well as the button to close it. So if I click on the who liked gallery right here, and we look at the visibility property for it, here we can see it's set to show who liked. So when that's set to true, when I click this text here, it becomes true and now it appears. That same visibility property is used also for the icon up in the corner that allows you to close that particular set of controls. And that when I click that particular control to close it off, you can see I'm just setting show who liked back to false. So that's how if I click on the X right here, show who liked is back to false. Those controls had their visibility based on that variable and they disappear. If I click three people like this again, now they're back because that variable is now true again. I'm going to add another shout out now so we can see the behavior of disabling the control that allows you to like a shout out as well as how the text displays depending on how many people have liked it. So to do that, I'm going to start the app back up in preview mode and I'm going to send a shout out over to Damien here. This doesn't take long at all. And after I create this shout out and send it, we'll go back to the home page and we'll see how that looks. At this point, the app is writing a new entry to that data table called shoutouts that I showed you in Excel. And that is then going to finish the process. And we come back here and now we can see it says be the first to like this because no one's liked it. And also it knows I haven't liked it. So the smiley face is enabled. Whereas down here, the smiley face shout uh, like button is disabled. We can see how many people liked it. So if I click on the little smiley face to like it, now we can see one person, and that's me, likes this. Because it was me, it's again disabled. If we go back to Excel, we can see what was written in the back end. Here I can see the new shoutout that was created. Notice the shoutout app uses a format that uses the year, date, time as well to generate the primary ID. It's different than the hard-coded one you see that comes with the app. So here's the shout out I sent and its ID. And since I liked it, now I can see the ID and the person who liked it, me, right here inside of my list. So there's one last piece to the puzzle, and that is showing how we created the gallery you see right here to show pictures of the people who liked the shout out. Going back into edit mode, I can select this gallery here. And here you'll see the gallery I added to the app. Notice this gallery is not nested within the other gallery. It's not supported to nest galleries within galleries and power apps, so I create the gallery outside of the gallery that displays all the different shoutouts. If we look at the items collection for this particular gallery, you can see we follow the same approach. I'm filtering the likes collection where the primary ID is equal to the selected item in the gallery's primary ID. So that's very simple there. And I have to convert it to text because there would be a data type mismatch between number and text if I do not do so. To actually display the pictures in the gallery, I use this code right here. This code ensures that the person is an user in my particular tenant. That's the checks at the top right here, that they share my domain. If the user is an external user, then I'm going to show a generic picture to represent their picture. If they're not an external user, then I'll do additional checks here to make sure that they've got an email address that's not blank. And then I will check if they have a photo. If they have a photo or do not have a photo because it's equal to false, again, I will show the generic picture. But if they do have a photo available, then I'll invoke office365.userphotos and pass in their email to render the photo. 
For more information on this pattern, please see my blog. I have a good blog post and a sample app that demonstrates the right way to use this code inside of a Power App. So I hope this was helpful for you and a good demonstration of how you can add like capabilities to your Power Apps as well. And who knows, maybe you'll even extend the shout out to Power App just like I'm in the middle of doing here for my organization so that it supports like capabilities. Thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe to my channel. I've got a lot more great Power Apps videos coming. Have a great day.